Number five, St. Mary the Virgin Church. Clop Hill, England. I gotta say, that sounds like it's a fake place, like where Sir Topham Hat lives. Well, not only is it real, but it's home to a bone-chilling haunted church, St. Mary the Virgin Church. Now, St. Mary was built in 1350 outside the main settlement of totally real place Clop Hill. Traditionally, churches are built facing the east. I didn't know that. It's so it can align with the sun rising, which in Christianity is associated with heaven and the Messiah. Churches have their altars facing east, so you pray in that holy direction. Well, St. Mary's just had to be a little different, and this church is facing the west, facing away from God. And it's why some people believe the church is hosted to evil spirits, as facing west means they've shunned God and opened their doors to the devil. Paranormal investigators have strongly suspected the church as being host to satanic rituals. As the church fell into disuse, it became a popular spot for vandals, and if you believe the legends, black magic. In 1963, a local couple saw two people wandering around holding a human skull, which definitely I think would cause you to look twice. The people told the couple that they had found the skull in St. Mary's, where it had been jammed into a wall. When the couple went to investigate, they found on the floor a breastbone, pelvis, and leg bones, all laid out in a pattern used for black mass. Pretty spooky. Scattered cockerel feathers and tracings of two crosses filled in red were found inside the church as well. And as if that wasn't slightly unnerving enough, they also found that six graves of women in particular had been tampered with as well. All signs seem to be pointing towards some dark rituals happening at St. Mary's Church. Common sightings at the St. Mary's Church range from smaller scale things like strange screeching during the night or hearing the bell going off despite being long abandoned, and the more threatening reports seeing tall, dark figures wandering the ruins of the church, perhaps getting themselves ready for another ritual, or perhaps they've been contacted by a ritual and are arriving. Only thing I know is I won't be checking out the Midnight Mass there anytime soon. And if you're interested in way more scary stories of all manners, cryptids, conspiracies, churches, hauntings, aliens, we've got a little bit of everything at Top 5 Scary. So click on through, find something to get cozy with, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell so you catch all of our videos as they drop. But do all that stuff at the end of this one, okay? Because we got way more haunted churches for you coming right up. Number four. Our next entry on the list today is going to be the Aquia Episcopal Church. And if you haven't said that, try saying that 10 times fast. I dare you. Located in picturesque Stafford, Virginia. The church has 200 years of history to it, which means it's also got approximately 200 years worth of ghost stories to study. When the church was first built way back when in the 18th century, it was stained by an unfortunate tragedy. You see, the surrounding areas were exhausted by war and the lack of resources for food and money, and as such, brigands would take to the dark country roads to attack innocents during the night for whatever they had on them. Well, one young woman was hiding from a gang of highwaymen and marauders and sought out the church as a safe haven. Unfortunately, the bandits eventually caught up with her and she met an untimely end. Now, these men were never caught for their crime and her body was not found for hundreds of years, left there to rot and decompose. And many believe that because of this, her spirit is tied to the church. And there have been several reports of hauntings ever since the discovery of those accursed bones. Visitors mention hearing footsteps frantically scattered around at night. These footsteps break into a run, but if you go searching, you'll never be able to find anyone attached to them. Voices can be heard in the room where she was attacked, some saying it sounds like a call for help or a painful scream of a struggle. Some go so far as to say they saw a transparent apparition of the woman in the church's windows or on the balcony. One story comes to us from a custodian who worked the graveyard shift there in the 1990s, claiming that he saw a ghostly woman's face floating above the graces and says that he saw her smiling at him through the balcony windows before she vanished. One last one on this church. In the 1990s, to celebrate the bicentennial anniversary, the church sent out an invitation to a group of Civil War reenactors to fight a mock battle on its ground. During the night, one of the reenactors was complaining that there was a red and orange light that was flickering the entire night during the church that prevented him from sleeping. The man explained this to the father of the church, and the father explained back that there was no electricity in the vestry, and that the light must have been the spirit confused by why the Civil War had started up again. Imagine, you're a ghost, you're already out of time and then you look outside and you see guys from your time, my little ghostly sense of the world would be so thrown off. I would have to buy a new ghost calendar. <laughs> Number three, Monaster Nagayal the Duff or Abbey of the Black Hag, if you don't got all that time. Wow, you see that? You see what that church is called in that little Chiron below me right now? I'm just supposed to pronounce that with like, my lips? Okay, it's also called the Abbey of the Black Hag and that's what we're going with. We're not calling it that other thing. 
I'm not doing that. Black Abbey of the Hague, only name this church has ever gone by, and it was built in 1298. And it was one of the well-known medieval convents in Old Ireland. The remains of the abbey still stand today in a secluded valley, making an already mysterious and supernatural place just that much more supernatural and overgrown and spooky. I mean, the place is called the Abbey of the Black Hag. You don't name a place that unless it's extremely haunted or if there's like a cool boss fight or something there. Sounds like it's straight out of Dishonored. It's believed that the last abbess, horrible word by the way, in charge of the abbey practiced witchcraft and in the scary way, okay? She brought death, misfortune to the surrounding areas. Pope Martin V condemned the abbey, not being down for witches at all. The accused witch left to live out in the damp, deserted abbey by herself, which she probably loved because it sounds scary. Over time, her skin blackened, her hair furled, and her soul twisted, leading to the place being renamed the Abbey of the Black Hag. And if you can believe it, there's actually more to this one. The Count and Countess of Desmond once called the abbey home when attempting to flee their attackers, where the Countess was fatally struck by an arrow and buried by her husband. But it wouldn't be the end of the Countess because sightings of a ghostly figure around the ruins of the abbey were common, meaning someone eventually went to dig up that grave, finding worn out finger bones, meaning she was still alive when she was buried. It's said now that a woman's panic shrieking can be heard in the early hours around the abbey. Number 2. The Borley Rectory The Borley Rectory is an old London estate that has the unique distinction of being considered the most haunted building in the United Kingdom. No big deal, or anything. <laughs> Almost immediately after its construction, stories of haunting started to creep out. One of the first local legends says that in the 12th century, a priest and a nun had a naughty little affair, and when they were discovered, the nun was bricked up and left to rot in the nearby church. Since then, they say that her spirit roams the rectory. In 1900, four daughters of the then estate owner all said that they saw a nun wandering around the estate late at night. They tried to talk to her, but got no response back, just a scary ghost stare. The family claimed they'd see this nun around the property, and on one occasion, they thought they saw the spectral apparition of a horse-drawn carriage with a headless rider, some real sleepy hollow stuff. From there on, there was all these reports of bizarre sounds or strange shadows creeping out the corner of your eye. In 1927, the estate changed hands as the original family owning the estate had all passed on and a new family, the Smiths, had moved in. Shortly after, they discovered a human skull in the cupboard in a brown bag. Uh, which is not a great housewarming gift, to be honest. They reported poltergeist behavior, unexplained footsteps, lights flicking around them, and the same sightings of headless specters. Now, they only lasted two years, not being down for any of the hauntings or skulls and cupboards, any of that business. And the next family, the Foisters, didn't have much better luck. They had objects flying around their home, and on one occasion claimed their daughter was attacked by something truly horrible. They moved out as well. And the last owner of the rectory would be Captain Gregson, who accidentally lit the estate ablaze while unpacking, although insurance claims they think the fire was started intentionally, perhaps in a desperate attempt to cast away whatever evil has been trapped in the Borley Rectory for so long, or perhaps he unintentionally unleashed it out into the world. Time will tell. At number one, Mortimer Abbey. Mortimer Abbey is a monastery in the forest of Lyons, France, a real old church built in 1134 on marshland near the stagnant water of the drainage lake. The monks dug it out to try and dry the marshy land around the Fulbrock stream, which was called the Dead Pond. In French, Melt Mall, which is where the name comes from. You can kind of hear it there. More Mal, Mortimer, you know. Perhaps it's this history of being built on a dead pond is why Mortimer Abbey was doomed to be haunted. Now, the abbey flourished for centuries, but over time started to become claimed by the passage of time, and it fell into decline and disrepair. In the 17th century, there was an attempt to try and rebuild the abbey and recapture its former old glory, but the decline was already pretty present and it set in by that point, and by the time of the French Revolution, only five monks still remained in the abbey. Eventually, the abbey would collapse entirely and go private, and in 1863, the abbey would find itself in the hands of a rich Parisian family, the Delarues. Mr. Delarue moved his wife and his sons into the abbey, but soon discovered they weren't 
weren't the only tenants. While walking the lawns, the young people of the house saw a light from the library. As if by an invisible hand, these hatches unfastened, their handles turned, and the windows and doors all opened. The paintings on the inside of the abbey turned themselves around and steps thundered out into the halls, and nobody moved out immediately after. I would have started looking for new real estate right then and there. But one night, the young Delarue, Charles, had his fiance over to come see the estate that would become her new home in marriage. She was offered the guest room, but found herself terrified during the night when she couldn't sleep because she was too busy being tormented by mysterious sounds and objects around the room that were hurling themselves around being possessed by something. Having had, quite frankly, enough, like I think any of us might have, the young suitor announced she would never live in this house, called off the entire marriage, and hurried back to Paris tout de suite, where there were plenty of handsome young men asking her hand in marriage who didn't live in old haunted estates, okay? That's the message to take away from this. Get the love you deserve, and the love you deserve is not in a haunted house. Number five on this list is the Templo Mayor Ruins. So a church is typically defined as a place for Christian worship, but let's Let's loosen up that definition just a little bit and start thinking about it as a building or landmark where people would have worshipped higher beings. If we start thinking about it like that, then the Templo Mayor ruins can certainly qualify. Mexico has a lot of haunted spots, but this is at the top of their list for sure. Guarev Gupta writes, This archaeological site in Mexico has a blood-soaked past. It is a haunted Aztec civilization site that has made its presence felt throughout the time. Around 4,000 people were brutal brutally killed to please Aztec gods. The priests would cut out the beating hearts from the victim's chests and then throw their lifeless bodies on the stairs of the Aztec temple. Aztec's last emperor, Huatmoc, made his last stand invading Spanish armies before he was tortured and killed. This Aztec is now a museum and tourists report strange sensational feelings and sightings of shadow figures. 4,000 people were likely sacrificed here. That is a truly absurd amount of sacrifices. Then throw on the fact that a great battle took place here and you end up with so much death. Needless to say, the spirits of those that passed have never really left. Glowing orbs are always spotted at this place, especially in the evening. There have been reports of these glowing orbs touching the people and transporting them to the world of the dead. They go into a hypnotic state and can't move. Sort of like what happens to people in the latest season of Stranger Things, if any of you have watched that. They have a very hard time explaining what has happened to them after the fact but they know that it was the dead. This is accompanied by a giant beam of light that flashes into the sky. There is evil here, there just has to be. All of the death that has transpired over the years has left a horrible stain on this place and evil has congregated here. No one knows what type of evil or what spirit is behind this, but just know that this is a scary place that you should probably avoid. Number four on this list is the Ness Church. Ness Church is a Norwegian church that is no longer operating. It's a collection of ruins now and a very popular spot for ghost hunters. The ghost hunters have discovered that electronic equipment or your standard cell phone isn't going to do so hot in this church. For whatever reason, the second that you bring anything like that in, it just completely shuts down. If one wants to have an electronic device here, then it needs to be specifically made to withstand strong spiritual energy. The most popular myth surrounding the ghostly presence that resides here is a priest named Jacob Christian Finnegan. This was a priest who presided over this church from 1800 to 1837. Apparently he suffered a very grim fate here along with his children. It's thought that he and his children were killed by an evil gang who came through the church looting it. They killed the priest and then, ever so cruelly, bricked his children up and left them to die. This is only one variation of the tale though, because one legend actually says that the priest did this to his kids himself. Regardless of which one is historically accurate, they're both pretty bad. The screams of these children are frequently accompanied by the sighting of this priest. It's said that he will stalk those who come here and follow them around, giving them a horribly uneasy feeling. It's very likely that if you go by yourself, this ghostly priest will attack you and could do some serious damage. Maybe he wasn't evil when he was alive, but he certainly is now. Number three on this list is Greyfriars Kirk and Churchyard. As the name Greyfriars might hint, this church is located in Scotland. History Hit says, with the Kirk tracing its origin to 
1598 and the graveyard dating back even further to the 1560s, Greyfriars Kirk and Kirkyard in Edinburgh is said to be one of the most haunted religious sites in the world. Known for body snatching and violent ghosts, the famously fearsome site has even been referred to by Scottish poet Robert Louis Stevenson. The site's most famous ghost is the Mackenzie Poltergeist. George Mackenzie, who was known during his lifetime as a ruthless persecutor of Scottish Covenanters, a Presbyterian movement in the 17th century. His spirit was reportedly released in 1999 when a homeless man looking for somewhere to sleep broke into his final resting place, the Black Mausoleum. Next to this mausoleum is the former Covenanters prison, which housed some 1,200 members of a failed anti-government revolution in 1679. Only 257 prisoners came out alive, with the remaining dead said to haunt the churchyard. The negative energy that surrounds this church is said to be so strong that it's attracted some pretty powerful beings. The devil is the one being that people associate with this place. Some believe that this church is actually a secret lair for the devil, that these other demonic spirits are working to keep us away from this place so the devil can fulfill his evil agenda. If this is the case, then I think that we should do as the devil wants and leave it alone. And finally, number one on this list is Nidaros Cathedral. This is not only Norway's most important cathedral, but also one of the most haunted as well. I mean, in all honesty, it literally looks like Dracula's castle if Dracula's castle was a cathedral. It was constructed in the 1300s, but the actual hauntings didn't begin until relatively recently in its lifetime. In 1924, Bishop Mary Gleditch saw something pretty scary and gruesome. The ghost of a monk who had a massive slash directly across his neck. Ever since that day, this monk is seen very regularly. Nobody knows why though. People and historians have looked through the history of this cathedral and can't seem to find any record of a big monk population ever staying here. However, it doesn't make sense that this random monk ghost would just show up out of nowhere, so you have to imagine that he was here at some point before. You also have to imagine that he got that cut on his neck here too. All of it is very dark and mysterious and makes you wonder what else happened here that wasn't documented. In at number five, we have the Chapel of Ease. Located on St. Helena Island, which is part of the British Overseas Territories, we have the Chapel of Ease. During the colonial period, Chapels of Ease was constructed by farmers as a house of worship because their farms were located so far from the churches. This one was built using tabby construction between 1742 and 1747 and served the island farmers who were members of the parish church of St. Helena. It was once known as the White Church as the combination of oyster shells and lime caused the structure to appear to glow white. Services came to a halt at the chapel after it was heavily damaged in a forest fire in 1886. The church was virtually abandoned when the farmers evacuated the island in the fall of 1861. During the federal occupation of St. Helena, the church was used frequently by several of the northerners who had come to the island to educate and train the freedmen. It was also used as a sanctuary by Methodist freedmen as early as 1868. To this day, the church is empty, left just as it was the last day of service. There have been many reports of hauntings in the chapel from explorers visiting the abandoned building. To start, the atmosphere of the church has been described as heavy, creepy, and hushed with the passing of time. While some visitors have even reported hearing whispers, prayers, and singing coming from the interior of the chapel. Others claim to have heard names being shouted in the silent burial ground and from the surrounding forests. Others have also said to have witnessed a lady shrouded in white walking among the tombstones with her family. Moreover, other visitors have witnessed a number of ghostly occurrences on the grounds, while individuals have reported strange sensations when walking through the church's graveyard. Not only that, visitors have seen ghostly figures of people dressed in 18th century clothing. In at number three, we have Most Holy Trinity Church. The Most Holy Trinity Trinity Church can be found in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. With the present day church is the third church built upon the grounds and was established in 1885. The church is known to be built on a site that had been a cemetery prior to being a church. Legend has it not all of the bodies were removed from the cemetery and that the souls of those who remain continue to inhabit the site. Not only that, but a number of people have mysteriously died while praying in the church since its doors first opened in 1885. Thus, those souls are also said to 
roam throughout the church building. Because of this, the lights in the church have also been known to go on and off without any reasonable explanation. At night, it is said that voices and the sounds of people walking back and forth can be heard in the building. It has been reported that priests who live in the rectory have continued to reserve the space as a guest room ever since the haunting started, as no one has ever been willing to live in it on an ongoing basis. Guests report having heard strange noises and the sound of a person walking back and forth while trying to sleep in the room. Fans and footsteps have also been heard on the staircases in the buildings, and the dogs who were once kept as pets in the rectory would stare in a trance-like state down the basement stairs, as well as into the dining room when the building got cold. With the number of souls trapped in the building and scary ghost stories throughout the years, it's hard not to believe that this church is cursed by the devil. In at number two, we have the Abbey of the Black Hag. The Abbey of the Black Hag lies in the center of the West Limerick in Ireland. It has been a source of paranormal and archaeological intrigue for centuries. It is named after Catherine D. O'Connell and was originally thought to be 13th century due to Vatican records. However, it may be a hundred or so years older than this. St. Catherine's Augustinian Abbey was one of the few medieval convents in Ireland during the 1290s. Pope Martin V closed the convent after the locals were terrified of one nun practicing black arts and witchcraft within the abbey, which is known as the Black Hag Cell. Due to the black magic performed on the grounds, it said that it brought bad fortune to the local population. The malevolent abbess was left to live out her days in the damp, deserted abbey. Due to the depraved conditions and her twisted practices, over time her skin blackened to such a degree that it gave rise to the local name for the convent, the Abbey of the Black Hag. While it's said that one ghost that haunts the convent is the Countess of Desmond, who was buried alive under the church's altar. Sightings of her menacing ghostly figure prompted an investigation of her grave, while visitors say you can hear her screams and scratching the stone to escape in the early mornings throughout the ruins of the abandoned church. And finally, in number one, we have St. Louis Cathedral. The cathedral located on Jackson Square, St. Louis Cathedral, is actually the fourth cathedral built upon its current location. The cathedral is the oldest continually operating cathedral in America. The two buildings which used to house the congregation of St. Louis's cathedral were destroyed by unfortunate events. The first building used as the cathedral was lost to a hurricane in 1722, just four years after the city's official founding. The cathedral, which replaced the earliest structure, then burned to the ground in New Orleans's Good Friday Fire in 1788. The third itinerary of St. Louis's cathedral was built in 1794, but by mid 1800s, the congregation decided that they wished to enlarge their parish church. Thus, the fourth version of St. Louis Cathedral went up in the 1850s. Perhaps the most famous ghost associated with the St. Louis Cathedral is that of Père Antoine. Père was a Spanish Capuchin friar at St. Louis Cathedral. He arrived in New Orleans in 1774 and was named Pastor. His generosity and kindness to the people of New Orleans made him very popular. He was well liked by all of New Orleans. His death on January 19, 1829 was met with a somber and mourning city. He was laid to rest inside the St. Louis Cathedral three days after his death. Since his death in 1829, the ghost of Pierre Antoine had been seen in St. Louis Cathedral by an untold number of people. His ghost is easily recognized as there is a portrait of him inside of the cathedral. It seems as though the ghost of Pierre Antoine especially likes to show himself around the holiday seasons. Commonly, the ghost of Pierre Antoine is seen near the altar and on the balconies. Interestingly, the ghost has been seen in other areas of the city as well, especially in the alley next to the cathedral. In addition to that, the ghost of Pierre, there are other famous ghosts associated with St. Louis Cathedral. Some of the ghosts which are said to haunt St. Louis Cathedral, like that of Père Dagobert, who became pastor of St. Louis Cathedral in 1745. On quiet evenings after worship, people have seen the ghost of Dagobert walking the aisles of the cathedral, his head down to the ground, walking silently in sandals. Coming in at number five, we have Orador Church in France. Located in central France, a few miles from Limoges lies a now abandoned town called Orador sur Glan. The town is now filled with empty houses, train lines that are out of order and a sign of tragedy. With roadside walls popped with bullet holes, fire marks, scorching stone houses, the church roof has gone through some massive explosion. This tragedy happened on June 10th, 1944 when Adolf Dieckmann received information from members of the Vichy regime that SS officers had been captured and were being held by members of the French resistance at Orador Cerveiras. 
Diekman led his team to Orodosa Glen intent on revenge. Whether he went to Orodosa Glen instead of Orodosa Veris on purpose or whether he mixed up the two towns because of the similarity in their names is something we will never know. The men of the village were quickly rounded up, then herded into a variety of surrounding barns and garages as the women and children were confined to the local church. Then a gas explosion was placed in the church and lit a flame. There was only a handful to survive the tragic accident that happened at the church of this town. With all the lives lost in the church and surrounding town of that night, it is said to be haunted by many spirits. As some witnesses report as they stand at the church's windows at night, they see the dark spirits of the people who lost their lives walking through the ruined village's deserted streets. Out of the state, they often smell the aroma of burning wood and flesh as it lingers over this abandoned village. Until recently, the new residents would leave gifts along the border of the village of the martyred as a peace offering for the spirits that still haunt the church. In the end, we will never actually know the reason behind the attack upon the Orador church on June 10, 1944, though some think there was an evil entity or spirit upon the church that coerced the attack to happen. In at number 3 we have Egg Hill Church, Spring Hills, Pennsylvania. Considered one of the most haunted churches known to man, we have Egg Hill Church in Spring Hill, Pennsylvania. The church was built in 1860 and was out of use by the 1920s. The most well known story about Egg Hill Church is of the great number of people that supposedly lost their lives. This occurred at the turn of the century in the 1800s, when the pastor at the time ended the life of his whole congregation by poison and kept them in the nearby woods. Other stories say that the pastor only ended the life of the people of the parish. He reportedly would end their lives one by one under the mysterious circumstances and got away with it, until the day that he would be discovered where he would end his own life in the church. Some who have been to the church say they have seen drawings of pentagrams and goats appear on the walls and ceilings, written by some unknown entity. Others say that from outside the church you can hear strange noises coming from the inside when the church is locked up and supposedly empty. Some claim the sounds are similar to children's voices. Therefore, there is no doubt that this haunted church has the potential to be cursed by the devil. And finally, in at number one, we have St. Colum Kyle, Ontario. Dating back to 1855, St. Colum Kyle Church was founded and located in the hamlet of Uptogrove. The original frame church was torn down and the present brick edifice was constructed in 1905. This structure sits on a hill far back from the road and can easily be viewed when driving on Highway 12 east from Aurelia. The ghost stories have been spreading since over a hundred years ago, classifying the church was haunted and these tales have been circulated ever since. Today the church is deemed haunted by some local residents and visitors. There have been many reports of ghost sightings, shadowy figures that will suddenly appear, creaking doors and eerie music that will play randomly from the organ. There have also been numerous reports of shadowy sightings of a figure wearing a black hat that floats through the choir area, creating chills for those who had observed it. Mysterious candlelight has been seen flickering from the windows on stormy nights. Many believe the spirit responsible is that of a former priest who, according to legend, pledged to complete a specific number of sermons, though he lost his life before he was able to attain that number. Now some churchgoers say he is returning to fulfill that promise. Number 5 on this list is Halstatt Karner. Halstatt Karner is one weird church man, let me tell you. I'm all about unique and cool decorations, but human body parts? <sighs> Kind of where I draw the line, guys. Discovery.com says many bone churches and ossuaries are decorated with femurs and pelvises, but at Halstatt Karner, these skulls themselves are decorated. More than 600 of the skulls on display in this Ben House, also known as Bone House in English, bear their former owners' names, professions, and the date of their death. Many are also adorned with decorative garlands and flowers. But perhaps what makes this bone church stand out the most is the fact that the most recent remains to be interred here belong to a woman who passed away in 1983 after having requested the Bain House as her final resting place. What's more, she might not be the last because the church is still open to receiving similar requests. So yeah, the dark secret here is that there is literal bones still being added. 1983 is really not that long ago when you think about it, and like the article suggests, that's probably not 
not the last person to have been thrown into this array of skeletons. I guess it isn't, but it feels like this should be illegal or something. At the very least, it's just super weird. Like, why is a bunch of dead bodies and bones and stuff bringing anyone closer to God? Isn't the whole point of church to connect with your spiritual side? Not get grossed out by a bunch of dead people who you might have even known at one point. The church is located in Austria and has got to be one of the scariest churches in that country for sure. Unless you want your bones to be added to some religious display, I would stay away from this place. Number two on this list is St. Nicholas Church. Hey, it's me. It just so happens that my church is haunted by a dozen spirits. Great. List first says, St. Nicholas Church is practically haunted by default. That's because the village of Pluckley, its home, is reputably the most haunted locale in all of England. The Kent village is home to the Watercress woman, who occupies the Pinnock Bridge and to the ghost of a schoolmaster who committed in front of his pupils. According to a conservative estimate, Pluckley contains no fewer than 12 active spirits. The church itself is said to be the home of both the beautiful ghost of Lady Daring and the Lady in Red, a ghost who searches the adjacent churchyard for her lost baby. The ghost of a former miller who worked in the area is also said to haunt the churchyard in search of a long lost love. Also, the ghost of a monk at nearby Greystone's house is also said to be seen during the night. Finally, visitors to St. St. Nicholas have reported seeing lights in the church's windows when no one was inside. So we have another church with just a plethora of horrible things. Someone taking their own life, a missing ch a man who has lost his loved one. My question is, why did all of this happen at this one church? Like what really caused all of this to transpire in the first place? Are we just supposed to believe that it's all coincidence or is there actually something more afoot here? I think that's the real secret and sadly, I don't know if we're ever gonna be able to find the true answer. And finally, number one on this list is Saint Andres on the Red. Just that name alone on the red. Like, of course this place had to have some dark secrets. List first says, St. Andrews on the red, completed in 1849, is located in the town of Selkirk, which is more or less a suburb of Winnipeg. It's the oldest stone church in Western Canada, and it may be the region's most haunted, thanks to the spirits of former plague victims. Other apparitions are said to populate the church's graveyard. Eyewitnesses have reported seeing a ghostly man clad in black and a mysterious woman in white. Also, a disembodied pair of red eyes have startled the visitors in the past, while a ghost car has been noted not far from the church's main entrance. If you're thinking about visiting the church or graveyard, be wary. Those who've claimed to have seen the various apparitions also reported having terrible nightmares the following nights. Most of these nightmares apparently involved the gates of the cemetery, which rattle even though no hands are seen shaking them. Some people can't shake these nightmares either. The occasional individual will have these persist for months or even years. I'm sure that the architecture and natural beauty is nice and all, but I'm not trying to risk nightmares for a year to see it. I do wonder what happened to those gates though. Is it some weird thing with the wind that's causing it, or is it what people suggest? Some type of ghostly intervention. I tend to think some sort of spirit has to be involved considering the thing with the nightmares happens as well, but you gotta wonder who. Sometimes I really do think that being a paranormal investigator would be awesome because you could get to the bottom of these things, but then again, that's a pretty unforgiving profession. Coming in at five, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Key West, Florida. St. Paul's Church is the fourth church structure built by St. Paul's between the 1800s and early 1900s. And though it may look bright and new, this is because the church has been rebuilt numerous, and I mean numerous times. The original church made of coral rock was completed in 1839, however it was destroyed during the Havana hurricane in 1846 and was rebuilt in 1848. Once again though the church was destroyed when the great fire of Key West struck in 1886, however by some good fortune the rectory survived unscathed and the rebuilding once again began on the third structure ending in 1887. However disaster struck once again though in 1909 when the church was destroyed by a powerful hurricane. This time though the parish hall survived as well as the rectory. The church was once again rebuilt and construction was completed in 1919. However, during all of these rebuilds, it was discovered that the site was once a seminal burial ground, with the land being previously owned by the Fleming 
family before the church was built, and the land was only granted after the widow was assured her husband's remains that were interred on the land would not be disturbed. However, this is where it gets spooky. Legend has it that the promise was broken and the widow's husband, John William Charles Fleming, was removed from the site. Spookier still, according to some locals, his ghost still wanders the site. Other apparitions have been reported as well in the graveyard. One being a ghostly group of children who were killed in a fire set by a jealous deacon who was taking revenge on his unfaithful wife. Yeah, yikes. Coming in at 4, St Andrews on the Red, Selkirk, Canada. Built between 1845 and 1849 to serve the local community of retired Hudson Bay Company personnel, this church is located in a small suburb of Winnipeg, located on a lightly forested hill with an incredibly impressive gothic design. It is by far the oldest stone church in Western Canada and has definitely had its fair share of paranormal activity. The church became an old campfire story among young teens and rebellious kids who would dare their friends to walk backwards around the church three times, with the expectation that you would disappear. Now of course that never actually happened, but it was still a frightening tale to tell children so they didn't wander through the cemetery at night. Now what makes this church truly chilling is that victims of influenza, diphtheria, typhoid and tuberculosis from the early colonial era were interred here, and their restless spirits are said to still wander the grounds of the church. Specifically, some visitors have reported disembodied red eyes floating through the cemetery, organs playing spontaneously, as well as a mysterious woman cloaked in white who is known to rattle the gates of the church. If you dare, you can take a self-guided tour of the church located in Selkirk, Canada. Coming in at 3, St. Michael's Church, Dublin Island. This is an Anglican church built on the site of an early Norse chapel from 1095, with the current structure dating back to 1686, undertaken by William Robinson. As it stands, this church is the only parish church on the north side of the River Liffey, surviving from a Viking family. Foundation. Now, the exterior of the church is nothing to write home about. However, the interior is what we're going to be discussing, specifically the vaults. The vaults of St. Michael's contain a large amount of mummified remains, with the walls of the vaults containing limestone, thus keeping the air dry and creating ideal conditions for preservation. Among the remains of the 400 year old body of a nun, a six and a half foot man believed to have been a crusader, a boy with a severed right hand and feet, and Henry and John Shears, who took part in the 1798 rebellion. Unfortunately, a number of the crypts in the church's vaults were damaged by vandals in 1996 and once again in 2019. After the most recent event, the church has stated that several mummified remains were desecrated by vandals, including the remains of the nun and the crusader. Tours used to be open, however, after the recent incident, they have been temporarily shut down. Not only will you be dealing with the enraged spirits of the dead when visiting this church, but also the despicable living. Coming in at 2, Cathedral of the Assumption of Our Lady, Guadalajara, Mexico. Also known as the Guadalajara Cathedral, this is a Roman Catholic cathedral of the Archdiocese of Guadalajara and was built in 1541 in the Spanish Renaissance style with neo-gothic spires. However, though the building is beautiful, it has been plagued by hauntings and tragic events. On May 30th, 1574, during mass, neighbors fired shots into the air. Some of the bullets fell onto the cathedral and started a fire, ultimately damaging the building. A second tragic event struck in 1818 when an earthquake shook the city, causing the towers and dome to collapse. The cathedral was of course repaired, however it continues to be in danger. It was damaged by earthquakes in 1932, 1957, 1985, 1995 and 2003. However, outside of natural disasters, the cathedral also has a ghostly side to it. One of the most popular attractions is of course the Crypt of Archbishops, which is truly chilling. However, more chilling still are the mummified bodies on display there, with one dating back to the 1700s, which belongs to a child that was killed for conversion converting to Catholicism. Some visitors to the cathedral have claimed that they have seen her eyes blink and have witnessed her hair move. Very spooky indeed. And finally coming in at number 1, St Thomas Anglican Parish of Mulgoa, New South Wales, Australia. Designed by Reverend Thomas Mackerson and built from 1836 to 1838, this church is incredibly striking with a gothic revival design and is said to be one of the most haunted churches in not just Australia, but in the world. Though the church is youthful in appearance and located in a semi-rural area, it is hiding an incredibly dark and tragic history. Legend has it that two young boys 
died in a fire in the bell tower of the church after a prank went horribly wrong. Since that fateful day, any kind of light, even candles, anger the spirits of the boys' restless spirits. According to a Facebook group, Haunted Places of Sydney, they say, I quote, There's an urban legend that claims that if you drive laps around the church at night, the headlights of your car will switch off, and if you continue, the car will stall. However, it isn't just the church's legend that is creepy. The surrounding cemetery is also filled with monuments that date back almost 200 years ago. With the monuments that date back almost 200 years, adding to the creepy factor. As of right now, the church is owned by Anglican Church Property Trust and was added to the New South Wales State Heritage Register on April 2nd, 1999. Number 5 on this list is the Old Post Chapel. This chapel is located in the Arlington, Virginia Cemetery and is definitely one of the most haunted churches in the world. The Arlington Public Library writes, The Old Post Chapel was commissioned by Major George Patton Jr. in 1933 when he toured the chapels on the grounds of the Walter Reed Hospital. Peyton told Post Commander Colonel Kenyon Joyce that the new chapel should combine the functions of a principal chapel with those of a mortuary chapel in one building. Workers broke ground in February 1934 and the chapel was officially dedicated on April 21st, 1935 where it was known for its attractive spire and intricate stained glass windows. The chapel serves as a place of worship for the community, a wedding chapel and a place of final honors for those laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. Many fallen service members have lain in wait in the Old Post Chapel for their final trip and it's allowed family members to grieve in private. So it's unsurprising that many active duty service members have reported hearing disembodied voices and footsteps in the chapel when they've been there alone. Locked doors have unlocked themselves and opened on their own. Canine units patrolling with service people will refuse to go into the building and bark at the door, especially at night. And visitors describe a young grief-stricken woman dressed in white who waits for her sweetheart. Rumors are that she threw herself from the bell tower which remains locked to this day. So what really sticks out to me there guys about that excerpt is the canine units. Dogs not wanting to go into this place because they're scared. You ever notice how animals can get skittish when a big storm is coming or something like that? Well, they sense these things and they pick up on stuff that humans just don't. I personally imagine that they probably have a similar ability with spiritual presences or anything of that nature. Also, considering how many people have been laid to rest here, it's no wonder why this place would be as haunted as people are claiming it to be. If you're going, then definitely pray before entering, but don't be scared to just avoid it altogether either. Number 4 on this list is the Abbe de Mortimer. This abbey was a whole thriving community at one point, but now it's a total ruin of its former self. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be zeroing in on the place of worship that they had at this spot and looking at how haunted that is. And let me tell you, it's pretty freaking haunted. In the 15th century, this place was booming and one of the brightest communities in France. It really looked like it was on the come up. But fast forward 200 years later and things had really fallen off. Greed had taken over and the men who were in charge were far more interested in their personal gain than the growth of this place. People started leaving and things started to wear and tear with time. Eventually there got to a point where there were only a handful of monks still there living under the leaky roof of this abbey. Well, in 1790, they met a very grim and sick fate. This was the time of the French Revolution and religion was very much out of favor. A group of revolutionists swept through the area and believing that the monks had some sort of treasure hidden here, they took them into the cellar and they killed them. The manner to which these men died was brutal. Because of this, it's believed that their spirit still clings to the ruins of this place. Future owners of this location had many run-ins with ghosts and even had to perform some exorcisms in their time being there. There have also been reports of werewolves and other demonic creatures here. The monks are by far the most spotted poltergeists though. The crazy thing is that apparently they aren't that evil. One would think that after their life was so ruthlessly stripped away from them that they would harbor some anger, but apparently they don't. If you do make it out here, then I recommend you pray not only as a form of safety, but also as a sign of respect for the souls of the monks who still live here. And finally, number one on this list is St. Paul's Episcopal Church. 
This church and the grounds that it resides on is haunted by a number of different ghouls. It's located in the Florida Keys and has seen many a tragedy in its days. Whether it be a hurricane, a great fire, or other natural disasters, this church has pretty much been through it all. Ghosts and Gravestones writes, The most well-known haunt of St. Paul's Church Cemetery is that of a man in 19th century attire who appears as a flimsy white vapor. Many believe that it's the spirit of Fleming himself who seems upset. Is it because his gravesite was disturbed so many times throughout the years by all the reconstructions? Nobody knows for sure, but his apparition has startled many. Another spirit that seems to roam the graveyard is a sea captain who appears to take great pleasure in frightening visitors. And beware of the ghost of a man who was legendary for driving the pirates out of Key West. His spirit is angry and ready to taunt, and those who've encountered his apparition say that even on a day when the weather is calm, violent winds come rushing through a tree that sits right next to his grave. John Fleming, the ghost that they talk about there, was the initial owner of this land and died on the property. His wife donated said land to be used for the church, but apparently her husband's spirit never left. The story behind the sea captain is unknown. Why he's come here or what happened to him is all a mystery. One thing is for sure though, he is a very dangerous ghost and many visitors have reported being assaulted and terrified by him. This is definitely one of those churches that I would again avoid altogether, but if you do go then make sure you say a prayer before entering. Number five on this list is Rosslyn Chapel. Rosslyn Chapel is located in Scotland and is arguably the most haunted church in that country. This chapel has a ton of ghostly legends surrounding it that lead to the lore of its hauntings. The Rosslyn Chapel actually writes themselves, in July 2006, a group of actors were rehearsing in the chapel for a play they were about to do at the Edinburgh Festival. One said that he saw a fairy-like figure in the grounds of the building. Another was locking up the chapel at the end of the rehearsal, as he was doing so, heard the voice of a child in the crypt. Obviously, he didn't want to lock the child in overnight, so he went down to the crypt to get the child, but found that there was no one there. Another tale says that the ghost of a white lady haunts Rosslyn Chapel. Legend has it that she is a girl from the St. Clair family who was bewitched by an evil spell and sleeps in an enchanted chamber. Here, she is waiting to be rescued by a knight. Once rescued, the spell upon her will be broken and the knight will be granted great treasures. And yet another tale is of a phantom dog which roams the grounds around the chapel and on stormy nights its ghostly barking can be heard. We got a fairy, we got a child, we got spells, we got a dog. This chapel has everything that a paranormal lover could ever want. They also didn't mention in that article about the ghosts of the monks that supposedly live there. This used to be an area where a bunch of monks would meet while they were alive and it seems as if their ghosts have never left. And the crazy part about all of this is that nobody knows why this church is as haunted as it is. Most places that are tied to spirits have some sort of horror story to go along with them, but there really isn't anything here at all. I suppose it's possible that this church just happened to be built on an area where tons of spiritual energy has gathered. Hit me in the comments down below what you guys think happened to this place to get it like this, cause I'm honestly stumped. Number three on this list is the Church of Agia Theodora of Vasta. This church is located in Greece and is one of the most unique churches you will ever see. Sticking out of this tiny Byzantine church's roof is 17 holly and maple trees. These are sizable trees as well and grow over 30 meters tall. There are two versions of how this church got its ghostly presence, and they're described well by Greeker than the Greeks. They write, Coming from a family of only girls, Theodora, to save her father from having to join the army, disguised herself as a boy and joined up. Not long after joining the army, a local girl, believing Theodora to be a boy, and when Theodora, for obvious reasons, rejected her, the girl, out of revenge, claimed she was pregnant by Theodora and demanded they be married. For reasons known only to Theodora, she did not reveal her secret which could have saved her, and refused to marry and was consequently put to death. Version 2 is more or less the same, only this time, Theodora, again disguised as a boy, joined a monastery as a monk. Why she didn't save herself trouble and join a nun's monastery is not known, but anyway, a nun from a nearby monastery fell in love with the monk Theodora, the ending then being the same. Before her execution, Theodora prayed, let my body become a church, my blood a river, 
and my hair the trees. On the very spot where Theodora was executed, a spring gushed forth and grew to become a river which still exists today as the river which flows beneath the tiny church. So guys, if that legend holds true, then not only is this church haunted by a ghost, but the actual church itself is a ghost. This whole thing was made up by the spirit of Theodora and therefore is basically a living church. Locals have said that because of this reason, the water that flows through this river has some exceptional healing properties and can cure many ailments. Considering this church may actually be the spirit of a person who has passed, I highly recommend saying a prayer before you enter. Number two on this list is the Templo Mayo Ruins. So a church is typically defined as a place for Christian worship, but if we loosen up the definition a little bit and just make it a building or landmark where people would have worshipped higher beings, then the Templo Mayo Ruins can certainly qualify. This temple is one of the most haunted places in Mexico, and for good reason. Guarov Gupta writes, This archaeological site in Mexico has a blood-soaked past. It is a haunted Aztec civilization site that has made its presence felt through the time. Around 4,000 people were brutally killed to please Aztec gods. The priests would cut out the beating hearts from the victim's chest and then throw their lifeless bodies on the stairs of the Aztec temple. Aztec's last emperor made his last stand against invading Spanish armies before he was tortured and killed. This Aztec is now a museum and tourists report strange sensational feelings and sightings of shadow figures. 4,000 people were likely sacrificed here. That is just an insane number of people to have died over the years. Not to mention the fact that a battle took place here and that would have caused more loss of life in great numbers. Needless to say, the spirits of those that passed have never really left. Glowing orbs are always spotted at this place, especially in the evening. Some people have also felt contacted by the dead before. Like they go into a deep trance and get a vision of something to come or something happening in a totally other life. From my research, they've had a hard time explaining it, but they know that something paranormal has touched them. Some locals have even noted a bright light flashing up into the sky at this place before. It happens very infrequently and doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to it, but every now and again you can spot a beam of light blast into the sky. I don't think it's unbelievable to think that this place is deeply haunted with all of the death that's happened here. From my reading, it seems to be decently safe to visit if you go during the daytime, but I'd still say a prayer to those that were lost here. And finally, number one is the Chapel of the Dead. This one is really interesting because it's actually a crypt underneath a big church. The Chapel of the Dead, or the Capuchin Crypt, is located in Italy and it's underneath the Santa Maria della Concenzo dei Cappuccini Church. This church is located in Rome and was built in the 1600s. The church itself wouldn't be haunted if it wasn't for the 3,700 skeletal remains that are found underneath it. Yeah, that's right folks, this chapel of the dead has a bunch of dead in it. The remains of these dead are everywhere along the walls and represent different rooms of this underground chapel. There are six different rooms that comprise this chapel and they are as follows. Crypt of the Resurrection, the Mass Chapel, Crypt of the Skulls, Crypt of the Pelvises, Crypt of the Leg Bones and Thigh Bones, and Crypt of the Three Skeletons. Crypt of the Pelvises, guys, that's an actual thing. I feel like I don't need to go into detail about what sort of remains hang along the walls in that room, but yeah, that's an actual thing. And listen to what Wikipedia writes about the last room, the Crypt of the Three Skeletons. This center skeleton is enclosed in an oval, the symbol of life coming to birth. In its right hand, it holds a scythe, symbol of death, which cuts down everyone like grass in a field, while its left hand holds the scales, symbolizing the good and evil deeds weighed by God when he judges the human soul. A placard in five languages declares. Obviously, with all this being said, this place is deeply haunted. It sounds like something straight out of an Indiana Jones movie, and from what locals have said, it definitely could be. Severe bad luck can befall those that enter into this chapel, and it seems to be totally random. I could enter it and be like 100% fine, but you could enter it and just have horrible things happen to you for years. It's a really interesting place to read about, but definitely not the sort of place I'd recommend visiting. Number five on this list is the Lady of Guadalupe Church. This church is located in New Orleans and is known to the locals as being one of the most haunted spots in the whole city. This location hasn't always acted as a place of worship, but for a long time was a chapel that you really didn't want to end up at. That's because for the longest time it was actually called the Old Mortuary Church. 
As I'm sure that you can probably guess, the crowd that entered this place wasn't the liveliest. In fact, using the word live to describe them is just flat out incorrect. New Orleans was hit hard many a time with epidemics, with yellow fever being especially bad. There were times during the city's history where the dead were too many to handle, and they had to go somewhere. Enter in the old mortuary church. Thousands upon thousands of bodies have went through these doors over the years. In fact, for the longest time, the only people this place saw were the pastors who were here and the countless dead. Everyday citizens were too scared to come here for fear of catching the disease and wouldn't even risk going to see their departed loved ones. Obviously, all this death has left its ghostly mark. Eventually, it was turned into a full-fledged church that people attend, but not before the spiritual damage had been done. Nowadays, the spirits of some of those who died during this harsh period in New Orleans history still haunt the area. Glowing orbs have been seen by those who frequent the church floating around at nighttime. Subtle and faint moans can be heard echoing throughout the walls, as if the moans themselves were wind blowing through the church. The ghost of a man has said to approach people from time to time claiming he needs help and that he was never sick to begin with. This is definitely one of those churches who's seen its fair share of tragedy over the years and it shows. However, believe it or not, it may not be the most haunted church in New Orleans, but more on that later. Number 4 on this list is St. Helena's Chapel of Ease. This chapel is located in South Carolina and is a ruin of its former self. A web Number 5 on this list is the Borobudur Temple. Borobudur Temple is located in Indonesia and is frankly extremely beautiful. It's located on the island of Java and is one of the biggest Buddhist temples in the entire world. It truly looks like something from a legend or from something directly out of an Indiana Jones movie. Now it was built many hundreds of years ago between 780 AD and 840 AD during the Silandria dynasty. There's a lot of lore that surrounds this temple and a ton of mystery. Located in a very remote location, it kind of got forgotten about for several hundred years. Then in 1970, it was almost rediscovered by Yunsko and it was decided that they would try and rejuvenate it to its former glory. Now during the process of rediscovering this beauty, they also rediscovered the darker side of this place, which has people believing at least at one point, the devil may have been hiding here. Gruesome visuals etched into the interior of this temple depicting some just horrible things. Torture, beheadings, displays of sheer violence that I can't get into detail on YouTube about. Some awful drawings showing what would have gone down here at one point in history. Also, along with these acts of violence, some drawings that seem to point to the presence of the devil. Drawings looking at potential rituals that would have been performed in honor of this devil. People worshipping the devil and praising him, all of that. Nowadays, it's pretty understood that this place no longer hides the devil. But for several hundred years, it's very possible this could have been a bit of a stronghold for either the devil or another evil spirit. Number four on this list is the Chernobyl Church. Now I imagine a lot of you have heard about Chernobyl before, the devastating accident that went down in Ukraine back in 1986. If you aren't familiar, then basically a huge nuclear power plant exploded which caused the worst nuclear accident the world has ever seen. It killed 31 people right off the bat and then several more over the years from radioactive poisoning. That area where the blast occurred has been closed off to the public and rightfully so. It's literally still radioactive to this day, and if people were to go into the 20 mile radius that's closed, and then proceeded to stay there for an extended period of time, they would certainly feel the negative effects of doing so. All of this has left for a very creepy abandoned city vibe that looks like something straight out of the apocalypse. Most of the buildings here are horribly worn down and starting to fall apart. After all, it's been over 30 years and no one has looked after them at all. Which is why it's very strange to see the church in this village still in perfect condition. Recently, somebody entered into the radiation zone and went into this church. They were shocked to see that the church itself on the inside was still in perfect form. Even though everything around it has been hit hard with decay, this building still remains how it was. Why? Well, the person taking these photos didn't know and they didn't stay too long to find out. Apparently after entering, it wasn't long before they started to feel a very ominous presence. 
something deep and dark and sinister lurking here, not wanting to be found. As if entering the church woke whatever this thing was from its slumber and it wasn't ready to be woken. This individual got out of there as fast as possible and didn't want to investigate further, but it got me thinking that this church might be hiding the devil. A horrible accident occurs where tons of people perish, the whole city gets abandoned and no one can come into this area for over 30 years. And this one flimsy little church is still totally intact and looking pristine. It seems a little bit too suspicious for me. If this is the case and this church is hiding the devil, then we can take it a bit further too. Now the real question comes out about how the Chernobyl accident really went down. Maybe the devil or whatever demonic creature is living in this church had some role to play. 